Let's meet down at the lonely lake Before summer has gone away Hello and welcome to my garden. It is summer and we've had some very hot days with temperatures over 30 degrees. The garden has changed so much now, but it's also struggling because of the drought. The last time we've had rain was six weeks ago. My white roses are now in full flower and this is a variety called Snowwitchen. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm very pleased with how the white border has turned out with in the middle the white roses, the snow witchens again and then on both sides I have these foxgloves that I added earlier in spring and this is a white variety called Dalmatian white and I think it's absolutely stunning and it really adds something here to this border and in front of it there's a campanula popping up and on both sides and here as well I have a white hydrangea called Annabelle which is going to flower a little bit later On my terrace I have a large group of agapanthus growing in pots. This is the first time that I grow agapanthus and I absolutely adore them. Especially the summer love variety. It keeps on producing new flowers all the time and the bees love them too. Hopefully they will survive the winter. I also have a blue agapanthus variety called Amoret Blue. Most of my English roses have finished flowering. I have two groups, an apricot variety here and over there a pink variety. And over there I still have a few buds, so that will give me some more flowers. But the flowers that I had only last one or two days because of the heat. So now I've added some dahlias in this border in apricot tones and some more dahlias over there in soft pinks and some soft pinks over there as well. And then I've added a lot of cosmos into these three borders also in whites and soft pink, so that will give me some more flowers later uh, in the season. And over here my agapanthus has started flowering and I think it's absolutely stunning with this pale blue color and the bees seem to love it too. I love the David Austin roses in this small border. The fragrance is fantastic and I love the shape of the flowers. I don't think they like growing in my sandy soil, although I've added a lot of compost and cow manure. I never managed to get the bushy shrub full of flowers. The jasmine behind the wooden bench starts to flower and the fragrance is absolutely wonderful. 
especially on a warm summer's evening. The summer bulbs on my terrace, the eucomas, start to form flowers. I love these summer bulbs. They give a tropical feeling and they work very good with dahlias and agapanthus. The strawberries that are growing in containers on my terrace are now ready for picking. I'm growing four different varieties. It is kind of an experiment to find the best performing and, most important, the best tasting strawberries. The varieties that I grow are Daroyo, Favori, Verdi and Mara de Bois. Daroyo produces the most strawberries and they have a very dark red color. It is an early fruiting variety, just like Verdi, but that one produces the least strawberries. I didn't like the taste of that oil. It produced the most strawberries, but they didn't have that sweet strawberry flavor. Favori and Mare de Bois are ever-bearing varieties and should produce strawberries all summer. In a few minutes I will let you know which variety has the best taste. These are the first strawberries harvested from my containers and ah, they smell absolutely delicious. I wish you could smell them and I hope they taste just as good as their fragrances. So my winner of the best flavor of strawberries is Mara de Bois. I absolutely adore this strawberry and it also produces a decent amount of strawberries. So we'll definitely be keep on growing this one. It is time to deadhead the roses. This will stimulate the plant to produce more flowers. Due to the cold spring weather, the shrubs are quite small. Usually they grow a lot taller and flower above the yew hedges. These Norwegian roses have multiple flowers on the stem, clustered together. So I take out the ones that have finished flowering and when they're all finished I cut back the stem just above a leaf with five leaves. Sometimes they've already made new shoots, then I cut just above a shoot.
I've set up the framework for my climbing beans. It's not quite finished yet. I will add two more poles at the back, but I will do that once the peas have finished and then I can remove those and then I can add the tomatoes that I have over there and let them climb against the fence. And I might add some cucumbers as well, I'm not sure yet. And then these, I have planted them with uh, two varieties of climbing beans and then I've added some cucumbers here as well. So in between I have planted some more French beans that I had left, uh, the same ones that I have over there. And then underneath I have underplanted with all things that I had left. Uh, I have some calendulas, some beetroot, and then over here I have some lovely basil. These are the chilies that I sowed in April and they were struggling for a long time because of the cold weather. But now that we've had some warmer weather and also warmer temperatures during the night, they really started growing and they almost start flowering as well. I see some tiny buds over here, so hopefully I will get some chilies out of these. So over here I have my French beans and these are doing quite well and there are already some tiny beans here so yeah they really seem to like it here. Uh, I had here my radish growing before but that wasn't a huge success. I've harvested some but the others uh, were already in there for three months and they were still as big as a pea so I just removed them. And I don't know if it's because of the soil or the weather, because all of the root vegetables seems to struggle here. Um, like these carrots, they're finally growing, uh, but they're in here for three months already. Just as the beetroot and the turnips, they're not growing really well either. And then over here I've added uh, some corn salads and uh, these are my garlics and these are the onions and they're not a great success either because they already start to flower and once they start flowering and uh, onions won't grow anymore and they're really not big enough yet to harvest so yeah i don't think i will be growing those next year and then behind i have a few strawberries and then over there i have a grouchette and i can almost harvest one of them so Just look at the size of these tomato plants. They've had a real growth explosion. And they're looking really healthy and they start flowering. So they have some flowers here and there. So yeah, hopefully I'll get some lovely tomatoes this year. At the end of June, I was able to harvest my first courgettes. The hydrangea annabelle starts to flower. They start green and will turn white later. And in August they will turn green again. It is always a surprise what colors you get with these zinnias. The flowers last for many weeks and change color over time. I 
love the combination of the blue agapanthus with the pink of the Sidalsia LCU. They're both loved by the bees. At the end of June the terrace starts to get more of an exotic feeling. This wasn't intended, but it just happened. And the birds love this part of the garden too. At the end of June the seed heads of the alims are starting to look messy, so I'll cut these back soon and dry them in a vase as a decorative piece in the house. 